Hi everyone, today I'm going to introduce a peer's trading approach based on Renko and QG models. The plan that I'm going to be going through is as follows. So first, I will give you a quick, quick introduction to know the main ideas of the approach, then discuss the basic concepts behind it, followed by a strategy derived from it, and finally, you will, I will demonstrate two empirical backtesting on S&P 500 components and cryptocurrencies. So a quick word about me. My name is Annie Lin, and I'm currently a quantitative researcher at Houston and Sam's, and also a student studying finance and electrical engineering at National Taiwan University. This presentation, as well as the module that is presented in the arbitral lab, are based on a paper called Peers Trading Based on Statistical Variability of the Spare Process, published in 2013. The first idea here was to determine the turning points of the process we are going to trade based on the ideas of Renko and KG charts. Then use the characteristic and statistic of the turning points to, to define trading strategies and peer selection methods. To complete a peer trading strategy, two questions need to be answered. The first is how to determine if the process is suitable for peer trading. And the second is how much should the spread diverge to open the trading position. The paper we will introduce today uses the statistic of the turning points to measure the degree of mean reversion and the variability of the process to solve these two questions. Now let's go to the basic concepts. To implement this approach, the first thing we must do is to determine the turning points. The paper refers to this decision process as H construction. There are two types of H construction. The first is called Renko construction, and the second is called KG construction. They correspond to well-known technical analysis tools, Renko charts and KG charts. We can see from the figures here to see that when this kind, uh, for this kind of charts, its color will change while it confirms the turning points. It is worth noting that the construction processes proposed by the paper are very similar to the ones traditional technical analysis used but they are slightly different in the analytical expressions. For the Renko construction, the first step is to generate the Renko process from the original process we are going to trade, which is usually a spread process of a pair of assets. The idea here is simple. When a process changes beyond a certain threshold age, we recall the point. And finally, connect this point, then it will be the Renko process we are looking for. The second step is to determine turning points from the Renko process. The, the idea here is also simple. When the Renko process turns its direction, we record the current point as tau b, which means the confirmation point. And we record the previous point as tau a, which means the turning point or, or local extreme. After the turning points are determined, we can plot them in the original process. And it will be like, what the figure shows here. The KG construction is very similar to the Renko construction. The only difference is that we determine the turning points directly from the original process we are going to trade. When the process changes beyond a certain threshold age from the previous local extreme, we recall the current point as tau b, which means a confirmation point. And we recall the previous local extreme as tau a, which means the turning point. After we had determined the turning points, we can calculate some statistic about them to describe the characteristics of the tradable process. They are used to determine which asset appears to pick up for trading and what kinds of strategies to use. The first is H inversion. It counts the number of turning points, but excluding the first one, which means the times the process changed its direction. It is straightforward that mean reverting processes tend to have higher H inversions. So when we are choosing which pair of assets to trade, the level of edge inversion of the of their spread will be the good metric. The second is edge distance. It calculates the sum of vertical distance between two adjacent points. The last is edge volatility. It calculates the average, average distance between adjacent turning points, which measures the variability of the process. 
Here is an example. As well, we saw there are three turning points here, but we ex exclude the first one. So the H inversion will be two. The H distance here will be the sum of the length of the red line and the blue line. So that it will be six. The H volatility here will be six divided by two. So it is equal to three. Now let's go to the strategy. Since we have determined the turning points and calculate their statistics, we can use them to define strategies and use H statistic for analysis. There are two types of H strategy. The first is called momentum strategy and the second is called contrarian strategy. For the momentum strategy, the investors buy the tradable process when they recognize that it passed its previous local minimum and expect it to go up continuously. On the contrary, the investors sell the tradable process when they recognize that it passed its previous local maximum and expect it to go down continuously. For the contrarian, for the contrarian strategy, the investors sell the tradable process when they recognize that it passed its previous local minimum and they decide that the process has passed far enough from its previous local minimum and expect it to go down. On the contrary, the investors buy the tradable process when they recognize that it passed its previous local maximum. And, th and they decide that the process has passed far enough from its previous local maximum and expect it to go up. Here are some properties for this two strategy. The paper shows that the momentum H strategy is theoretically profitable when twice the threshold value of the H construction is smaller than the H volatility. On the contrary, the contrarian H strategy is theoretically profitable when twice the threshold value of the H construction is greater than the H volatility. The last and most important property is the paper proposed that for any, for any mean reverting process, regardless of its distribution, the H volatility is less than twice the threshold. Hence, Theoretically, trading the mean reporting process by the contrarian H strategy is profitable for any choice of the threshold. So ideally, as long as we know that a process has mean reversion property, we can use the contrarian H strategy to profit. So the only remaining question is, how do we find a process with, with mean reversion property? To answer this question, the paper proposed the following algorithm. First, we need to determine the asset pool and the length of the history data. Second, we take the log price of all assets based, based on history and combine them in all possible peers and build a spare process for each peer. And for each spare process, we calculate its standard deviation and set it as a threshold of the H construction. Then we determine the construction type of the H construction. It could be either Renko or KG. Finally, we build the H construction on a spare series formed by each possible peer and select the top N peers with the highest H inversion for peers trading. Next, next let's talk about the backtesting on SMP 500 components and cryptocurrencies. This strategy is proposed by the reference paper. So every six months, we set the SME 500 components as our asset pool and use the peer selection method mentioned above to select 20 peers to be traded. After the selection, we execute the contrarian strategy with these peers for the next six months. The thresholds used for the H selection are also used for the contrarian strategy. So here's a timeline of the strategy. We first select peers using one year history, then we start executing the contrarian strategy in the selected peers. After six months, we end executing the contrarian strategy and then repeat, and then, and then repeat the selection process. Here are the detailed parameters for peer selection. So we, we reselect the peers every six months and our asset pool is SME 500 components, which are updated every year. We use 12 months history data to count each possible peers H inversion and choose the top 20 peers with the highest H inversion. Here, we do not allow the same asset to appear repeatedly. 
For example, if app, Apple already appears in chosen peers, the next peer chosen cannot include Apple. So we did a back testing from 2005 to the middle of 2020. The results we got here matched with the original paper. The transaction, the transaction costs here are four n per round trip for the peer. We can see from the figure that if n equals 0.05%, the overall return is positive, but the performance gradually declines over time. We can see from the table that although the strategy returns are not as good as buy and hold S&P 500 ETF, the strategy volatility and drawdown are much lower. Here we add a simple filter to the strategy that the paper proposed. Recall that theoretically the contrarian H strategy is profitable when twice the threshold value of the H construction is greater than the H volatility. Since practically we have trans transaction costs for each trade. So we restrict that twice of the threshold value need to be greater than the sum of transaction costs and the H volatility. Here are the cumulative returns of the strategies when n equals 0.05%. We can see from the table that the strategy returns after the modification increase enormously, but the strategy risks only increase a few. Here are the cumulative returns of the strategy when n equals 0.1%. Again, we can see from a table that the strategy returns after the modification increase uh, enormously, but the strategy volatility only increased a few. So a quick conclusion about the backtesting. We can see that the performance gradually declines over time. This might be because trading fees have, have dropped a lot over the years, making the market more efficient. But the strategy will still be profitable when no transition costs are applied to it. Here we apply the strategy similar to the one mentioned above to cryptocurrencies. So why cryptocurrencies? Cryptocurrencies has become a, trend, a trendy trading commodity in recent years due to, its, due to its lack of unique fundamentals to support its value. Peers of cryptocurrencies tend to have a higher and more stable correlation than peers of stocks, which might be like very suitable for just trading. Here are the detailed parameters for peer selection. So we reselect peers every two weeks, and our asset pool is 50, 50 kinds of cryptocurrencies that can be traded on BNs. We use four-week history data to count each peer's edge inversion and choose the top 20 peers with the highest edge inversion. Here we do allow the same asset to appear repeatedly. So we did the back testing from 2020 to the middle of 2021. The transaction costs here are 4M per round trip for the period. Here are the cumulative returns of the strategy when N equals 0.05%. We can see from the table that although the strategy returns are acceptable, the strategy risks are not small. Here are the cumulative returns of the strategy when N equals 0.1%. We can see from a table that the transaction costs have, to have a significant influence on, the, on this strategy. When n equals 0.1%, the returns will be negative. So a quick conclusion about the backtesting. We can see that although the performance is not stable, its overall returns are very high when the transaction costs are 0.2% per round trip for the peer. Also, it should be noted that the issue of liquidity is not considered here. This may cause unexpected price snippage when using it. And here are the references for, the, for these slides. One can study a reference paper for more detailed discussions on this topic. And thank, thank you for the attention and the link of the slides is available in the descriptions.